If you are a fan of softball, you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. From softballjunk.com, we're bringing you more softball than anyone on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello, I'm Gary Leland, and this is the Fast Pitch TV Show. Make sure and take a look at all my videos, blogs, and softball information on my website at fastpitch.tv. The Fast Pitch TV website brings you more free softball information than anyone on the planet. Now, today I have an interview I conducted with slapping expert Larry Ray. I conducted this interview while I was at the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association National Convention in Vegas this uh, winter. If you're not familiar with the NFC, Go to their website at nfca.org for more information. You really need to check them out. You're going to love this interview with Larry. Let's go to it right after this short message about my Fast Pitch Magazine, which you can find at fastpitchmagazine.com. Oops, sorry. I was reading this month's issue of the Fast Pitch Magazine. What? You're not familiar with the Fast Pitch Magazine? Watch this. You are going to love it. Looks great, right? Want to find more about the number one coaching tool on the internet? Go to fastpitchmagazine.com today. Larry, I appreciate you taking the time today to come on and talk slapping. This is a really, really interesting subject to me. And last night we were talking about it, and you were telling me your thoughts on it's not really the slapping game, it's the short game. Can you kind of go into that real quick? Well, what I refer to as a short game is keeping the ball in front of the defense, not trying to, like, hitting or hard slapping where you're trying to drive the ball past the infielders. I'm trying to keep the ball in front of the infielders and, and have them make a play uh, extremely fast. And what, what I found is that the reason I think this uh, skill is so successful is that the one skill that we're not very good at in, in fast pitch softball is playing catch. And what we attempt to do is try to get a defense to do something they don't do very well anyway quickly. Right. And it just creates problems. I, you know, I don't care how a player gets on. I just want her on. Uh, because when you have a faster player on, then you can do more things. And then I'm going to go over a couple of statements that, I, that we made between last night and this morning. And your other statement I thought was really great is that uh, you're trying to steal first base, actually. That's the thought of mind that the player has, that they're trying to steal that base. Even though they say you can't steal first, you're going into it looking at it. That yeah, way. I, I want my players to feel that way. You know, uh, the ones that I work with generally have pretty good speed, and uh, so they all steal a base. Uh, and I, I want them to think of the same thing when they take off uh, in the batter's box is what they do when they take off when they're stealing a the base. Um, they're trying to go as fast as they can and, uh, you know, create some problems for the defense. And then I'm just going to go over a couple of things you said because I think these are great. Another thing I thought you said last night that was great is look at the player that's on first base normally. That's not the fastest player on the team. So it's a foot race between a speedster and a turtle, you know, to get to first base basically. So uh, if that girl's got a good uh, jump on that – the, coming off the home towards first, that foot race is probably going to go to the speedster. Uh, for the most part, it does. And, uh, and to make up for that, the defenses generally have to do some kind of crazy type things, you know, something they're not used to. Um, and that's what I want to do. I just want to create mismatches. So um, the, the way I teach it is that I always start off with a drag bunt because the players will slide their hands in some fashion. And that's what, exactly what I want. And when you, when you see, for example, hard slappers, they keep their hands at the end of the bat, and, and you know, no one has to move. Right. But when you slide your hands, just like what I tell my corners, you, know, you watch your hands. When they slide their hands, about 99.9% .9 of players in the country are drag bunny. Well, I want, I want the defense to think we're drag bunning all the time because I want movement from the corners. Oh. And when you get movement from the corners, like, you, like we mentioned, uh, the, the typical first baseman is kind of like in baseball, you know, is a big power hitter, slow type player. And... Uh, if the ball's not hit to her, generally she's responsible for getting back and covering first base. And that creates the foot race between, uh, I, I call them rabbits and, a, and an elephant. You know? right, so, right. Um, Sorry about the turtle. <laughs> that, that's our turtle, same thing. So um, that, that's kind of what we're looking at, is just creating mismatches. And then you've got a defense that's got to throw the ball quickly to a player on the run. You know, extremely difficult play. 
So, so you're you're showing bunt while you're slapping. So they're they don't even know which one it is really, but they're going to go for the bunt. Right. Uh, in fact, that's that's the thing I try to get my players to accomplish is that on their first step, it looks identical to a drag bunt, and all we're doing differently is supplying force when we're soft slapping. I'm going to try to hit a ball to the furthest point in the inf furthest point of the infield, away from first base, which is the five six hole. And if I can get a ball there, I, you know, over the years I've had a lot of players that can beat that out all the time. And that's what we're attempting to do. That's great. What, is there um, any particular age of uh, kid you'd say, this is about when you start working with them on uh, slapping and bunting more so than? Uh, you know, I used to get that question a lot is, you know, when's a good time to turn a player around, which is what we see most of the time, usually right-handed players now coming over the left side of the batter's box because of the advantages. You're closer. Right. You, know, you, can move, you can move before making contact where the right-handed hitter can't. There's nowhere because the ball's coming uh, at her. So, yeah, they run into the ball. Right, and uh, the slapper runs parallel to the ball. So um, so that's the advantage. But, uh, no, I, you know, it's just um, I wouldn't give up too quickly on trying to teach a young lady how to hit. I, I think sometimes that's uh, that happens too quickly. But um, now what you're seeing is a lot more players have been uh, on the left side all their lives, all their careers anyway. And um, so you're getting, they're getting more proficient. And the, probably the hardest thing that these players have to do is learn how to hit or make it look like they can anyway. Right, right. So is there, um, when, you're, when you're turning the player, you're going from right to, to the left side or you're starting them out slapping, is there any special <clears throat> tip on how to get them into the you know, concept of what they're doing, a, a slapping or to teach them or a drill? Or, you know, I know that when we were doing our players, we had uh, the guy who was teaching the uh, teaching mess up, had him put on a glove and slap with the glove and they caught the ball in the glove. And uh, is there anything like that, or not that one, but anything that you know of that's like going, yeah, this is a great way to start him. Yeah. Well, about, uh, about 25 years ago when I made my first DVD on teaching the slappers, that's how I introduced it. Uh, when you put a player from the right-hand batter's box to the left, you know, they're seeing the ball come out at a different, you know, with a different eye. And so what I would, most of them are right-handed players, so I'd have them put a glove on. And I'd just have them simply, you know, we'd shoot a ball through a machine and just simply have them catch the ball. So without the bat, just without catch the bat, it. yeah, just catch it, and then the next step I would have them would would take a step, and I want that the step that's where contact is made, and um, and catch it at the same time, so it kind of helps Still them the with their timing without the bat. So they're just worrying about like getting that idea of yeah see, of engaging see, the ball while they're moving. Exactly, seeing the ball come out, you know, from a different uh, side of the plate, and and just catching the ball, you know, it's, so it helps them kind of follow the ball all the way into their contact position. And then after taking a step, then I have them run. And same thing. And that kind of helps with the timing. But I want to make sure that we catch the ball behind the front foot. When the left foot lands, it, it goes directly to the pitcher. That's the first step. I don't want them to head prematurely to first base, or I don't want them to step towards a shortstop because then they're running into the ball. So they're the moving ball. to the pitcher, then the first. Yeah, first step goes directly to the pitcher. As I want them going as quickly as they possibly can and still be under control. I don't want them going out of control. But, uh, and then after that, I just tell them to play Pepper, you know, and uh, Pepper's a game that uh, is very beneficial for the short gamers because we're trying to place the ball, and that's what we're trying to do when we soft slap and bunt too. Okay, so the whole learning process really starts with an out of bat. Yes. I mean, really, that's right. the easiest way to do it. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I never understood why we were using the bat and the glove, you know, when we were doing them both. But that makes more sense. Do they have a hard time at first picking up on that ball from that side and catching it those first couple times? Yeah, and, and, you know, once a player has the basics down, which is a start, and that's probably the most difficult thing to, to teach them, to try to get them to understand. And what I do is when I'm working with them, I have them grade themselves on their starts. Because a lot of players, I don't, you know, I know they're probably fairly quick, but I have no idea how quick they are. And so what I just tell them, I said, you have to grade yourself on your start from 1 to 10. You know, 10 is as fast as you possibly can go, and one's a, a walk, a slow walk. And I go... So somewhere in between that, and then most of them say, well, you know, that number was a four or five. And I go, well, you know, a four or five, you've got to hope for the ball to be thrown away. If they get a good enough start, like when they steal a base, they're going to beat that throw there if, it, if the ball's not, you know, not hit too hard at the defense. So uh, do you have any, for a coach who's trying to, say we've got a young coach here who's, you know, used to just getting up there hitting and maybe doing a little button. You got any tips for them on just transition to moving them to the other side or anything that um, might help them? I know that's kind of an open question, but. I figure a lot of people are going, how do I start, you know? Well, you know, uh, I've had a lot of, a lot of people over the years, uh, um, and I've had some players where I would start them off doing this. It, it's a situational type thing. Um, with this type of player, got in 22 years at Arizona, I, uh, I can't remember ever sacrificing.
that player. When you're squaring around giving up and out. I'm going to give him two opportunities to drag bunt to advance a runner and Great. get on. And then with two strikes, then we're going to go to something else. We either hard slap, soft slap, whatever the defense uh, gives you. And um, so uh, I, I would just say that uh, I'm, I'm not opposed to turn around a player with two strikes if she feels more comfortable making contact with two strikes. Because, you know, if you, if you don't make contact, then uh, you, you let the defense off the hook. Right. So uh, Nothing's going to happen if you don't put the ball in play. Exactly. And so I tell them, you know, I'm trying to get the defense to do as many things as possible in a short period of time. I want them to feel the ground ball. I want them to have to throw it again. And then I want them to catch it. And uh, all in a short period of time. And the player dictates how quickly that is with their starts. Because if you get somebody coming out of the box extremely fast, I think that sends a message to the defense that, Man, I really have to hurry on this kid. And then sometimes they'll, you know, they'll peak too soon, or they, you know, they'll, they'll fumble trying to make, uh, you know, make a play quickly. Well, let me ask you another question. What's the best way, since you're, you know, kind of the guru on this, or not kind of the guru on this? What's the best way to defend against the slap? Well, because um, that was a problem. We <laughs> yeah. The best thing to do is to to get them pop up. You know, if they can hit the ball in the air, and the defense only has to do that many things to get them out and catch it. Right. Um, so the up pitch is, is generally a pretty good one because, uh, you know, if you've got a good rise ball pitcher, that ball looks pretty fat, you know, at the hitting area, and then all of a sudden by the time they've put a swing on it, it's, it's out of the zone. So uh, that's the best way. Okay. Um, the it's other a pitch for it. Right. Um, and, and if I know that a player is a soft slapper, in other words, they're going to keep the ball in front of the defense, um, I'll move the third baseman off the line a little bit if they're trying to aim for the 5-6 hole. Uh, and bring the shortstop in a little bit, but not much. And then I keep the first baseman in her normal position and the second baseman in her normal position. And they just had to read it and see what's going on. If the, the player shows her hands and bunts, the second baseman got the bag, and both corners come in. So uh, it just, uh, you know, that's a standard defense. And right. I, over you know, my 30 years of coaching at the college level, I think I've seen every defense there is, but every year's a new year, and, and somebody's going to come up with something. But um, what I tell my players is just step back, see what the defense has given you, and then attack that. And, and that's the thing. They have to be able to recognize it. When I first get them, I, I tell them what to do. But then I don't want to create a robot. I want them to kind of look and see and, right. and be able to attack. So that's where swinging the bat is crucial. You know, if, uh, if they're, they can take away your short game by playing way in, but then you've got to be able to do something to soften the defense. So... Um do you have uh, a DVD or anything? I heard you mention that earlier. Do you have some training uh, tools like that for coaches that they can get? I do. Um, and where would they find those? Well, uh, I had several companies that um, were, uh, you know, selling it for me. Um, the best way is, is just to go online or you know, okay. Google Larry Ray uh, or um, my, my email address. I still have my Arizona at one, which is lray at arizona.edu. Uh, and they can purchase that. And uh, it's been out for quite a few years. Um, I had two of them, actually. One was teaching the slappers, which is the basics. And not much has changed from that, only I, I don't, I don't uh, utilize a follow-through because I, I'm concerned with angles. Right. And, uh, like, Pepper is such a good game because it, they just play, you know, they're not taking the bat head past the handle like you would on a swing. And so all we're trying to do is create that angle. And uh, so uh, that's, that's probably the biggest difference um, in the first DVD. And, I, and uh, that one hasn't been out, for, well, it hasn't sold for quite a few years. So I made a, another one back about uh, seven, eight years ago. It's called uh, The Total Short Game. And it, it's everything I think I know, uh, I've learned over the last 30 years at the Division One level. Um, it's, it goes the dimensions of the batter's box, the, you know, the hard slap, the drag bunts, the hand positioning, um, you know, things like that. And... Um, and then the whole second half of that DVD is on base running. It sounds like they're both good tools. Uh, you know, I, I've gotten a lot of great response from people around the country over the years. And, uh, it's, you know, I try to break it down so that the novice uh, coach or the player could watch it and, and benefit from it. And I, I always tell them, hey, if you ever have questions about anything on the DVD or during your practices and what you're doing, if you're struggling, give me a call. I'll see if I can help you. That's really great. Well, I appreciate you spending this time with me this morning. We're up here, first ones in here, kind of. They're still putting stuff together. But that's what that background noise is. But I really appreciate it. And this was a very enlightening interview for me as well. well so thank you very much yeah, for your time. I, I appreciate you asking me. Yeah, and I enjoyed meeting you. All Bye. right. Well, thank you. Looking for a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount on all regular price bats on the website. That's right. 
$30 discount. Just text the word Fast Pitch to 555-888 and Gary will send you a discount code good for $30 off your next softball bet at softballjunk.com. FYI, that code's also good at the Arlington, Texas store. Welcome back. Now, that last short clip, that was my daughter Amanda telling you about my website, softballjunk.com. Make sure and text the word Fast Pitch to 555-888 and get your discount code for $30 off your next softball bat. And you can use that code at checkout to save $30 over and over and over and over. It's a great deal. You just need to text Fast Pitch to 555-888 and I'll text you back the discount code. Now, if you enjoy the show, I ask you at least check out my website, softball junk.com the next time you're looking for softball equipment. If I offer a competitive price, well, please buy from me and show some support for all the free content I bring you. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Please tell your friends about the Fast Pitch TV show and make sure take a look at my website, fastpitch.tv. Until next time, this is Gary Leland saying goodbye and thanks for watching. <laughs> This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV Network. See all of our shows and blogs at www.fastpitch.tv. 